In 2018, the West Africa Center for Crop Improvement, WACI, received a million dollar grant from the African Union and European Union to work with governments and industry partners in three countries on crop and soil health improvement for sustainable agricultural intensification towards economic transformation. The three-year project aims to address issues related to the food and nutrition security objectives of the African Union under its competitive research grant scheme supported by the European Union. Um, at the end of 2017, an important chapter in the WACI project was closing. In fact, our main donor, Agra, was folding up. We had to begin thinking about ways to sustain the WACI project. At the time, we, that was towards the end of 2017, we developed a 10-year strategic plan, which hinged on transforming WACI into a research-intensive institution. What we did was to hunt for if you like, grants, and we got excited when we saw a call from the African Union Commission. So we chose to um, work on specific crops which are important to food and nutrition security in the sub-region. The crops we agreed to work on were tomato, rice, maize and cowpea. A number of initiatives have since been rolled out under the project. Farmers have been trained through participatory approaches such as farmer field schools and value chain workshops. They've been trained in good agronomic practices, good integrated pest and disease management practices, and proper soil health management. And innovative technologies, including the system of rice intensification, SRI, have been disseminated to farmers. Farmers have also been encouraged to adopt improved, high-yielding and market-leading varieties which has enhanced productivity on their fields. Increasing productivity on farm for farmers using appropriate innovations that we have either developed or adopting from uh, other systems. Integrating these innovations to help accelerate the gains in terms of yields on the farms and also to support farming families, especially smallholder uh, farmers, uh, integrate these new technologies. Examples are the hybrid maize that has been developed by Waki, which is yielding more than 10 times what farmers usually get on their fields. More than 4,000 smallholder farmers and seed growers have benefited from the project in training and associated support, with a large portion of them being women and youth. 338 agricultural extension agents have also been trained and engaged to support farmers under the project. And more than 973 participants have been engaged at value chain workshops which have influenced policymakers to invest more in these crops. Hundreds of cascading jobs have been created in farming communities too. Some of the benefits have been quality improvements, have been increased production. Um, you realize that there's been an increase in the experience, both on the parts of the farmers and on the team. Through the project, an estimated 60% of farmers in targeted areas in these three countries have adopted good agronomic practices, including planting in rows instead of seed broadcasting. This has increased optimal land use and increased productivity by about 70 to 100 percent. Farmers in Ghana and Burkina Faso have gotten a 20 percent increase in yield. Farmer field schools on maize production have created well-trained farmers have better knowledge and skills in the use of fertilizers 
as well as weed management and pest control, resulting in an 80 to 100% yield increase on the farms of targeted farmers. Even at the baseline level or implementation level, there are communities that are clamoring for similar projects because they heard that it's going on in a particular community. And therefore, they are, why did we not, why didn't you guys select us? You know, it means there is this need and people really, and I really like the role some community leaders and chiefs played. Uh, there are chiefs that were calling to see whether we can do training or even, even the baseline, whether we can talk to some of their people because they want their voices to be heard and their challenges to be highlighted. So that was quite refreshing for me. It has been an interesting journey, especially from the time we collected the samples, took them through the metagenesis project and, and planted them on the field. So we've gone through about, um, I think, three to four cycles of selfing of the metagenized lines. We started work with Green, and currently we are working with a PhD student called Kenneth Obobi. Who is I am currently multiplying the seeds to evaluate them under fall and worm conditions. So it has been an interesting journey so far, seeing how the plants have sort of evolved over the time. In Nigeria, farmers broadcast tomato seeds in the nursery and lose about 50% of seedlings due to competition. But the project has taught them drilling methods of planting and they are now getting 40% more yield in the fields. In Ghana, Nigeria and Burkina Faso, farmers benefiting from the project have seen 20 to 50% increase in production volumes of rice, maize and tomatoes, thereby increasing farmer incomes and profits by between 30 to 50%. Waki has released three new uh, maize hybrid varieties which are high yielding and there's a need to create awareness amongst the farmers that we have these promising hybrids that have the potential to give them a high yield. It yields about 9 to 10 tons per hectare which is really high so if a farmer should get these varieties the farmer would make some good yields and make some good money out of producing maize. So we want to create awareness on these hybrids and that's where I come in to help create awareness on these um, newly released maize hybrids. 4,000 farmers have been trained under this EU-AU project. We have about 300 extension officers and you can check with the agricultural extension services that this has actually been done, that we have trained 300 extension officers in Ghana, in Nigeria and in Burkina Faso. It's so refreshing when you go out to fields, I mean, to organize farmer field schools and how excited, I mean, the farmers are. I mean, it's so refreshing to see and uh, Surely this is um, an activity specifically that needs to be encouraged and uh, how do we go about that? I mean, governments can, for instance, incorporate um, farmer field schools into their policies. For instance, if you take the planting for food and jobs in Ghana, in the case of Ghana, we can incorporate uh, these farmer field schools into that policy and this will go a long way to affect the lives of these farmers. Let's begin our tour of the three projects beneficiary countries from Nigeria, where the first indigenous tomato breeding project is underway as a result of a Waki AU EU project. Dr. Dorcas Ibitoye, an alumnus of Waki, is developing tomato varieties with resistance to the Tuta absoluta pest, popularly known as the tomato Ebola. Three other new tomato varieties which are more climate resilient and can withstand drought and heat across Nigeria's north and south ecological zones have been tested and introduced in farmer field schools. This project happened to come at a time when Nigeria faced a setback, serious setback in tomato productivity, in tomato production due to the invasion of the total absoluta. Here in Nigeria, the farmer referred to it as tomato Ebola because of the rapid way with which it invades the field and destroys the field. So in 2015, there was to almost like 99% crop failure in tomato production and tomato became very, very scarce because we found out that the tomato that the farmers were growing at that time 
when we had that invasion, they were all susceptible and farmers were pumping in huge amounts of synthetic chemicals which on the long run are not good for the health of the farmers and the health of even the consumers. As an extension agent, we've trained them on, um, on the way of um, leaving behind their whole means of farming because um, the world is growing and the new innovations is coming in so in, in as much as they wish to improve their, their livelihood so they have to accept new innovations which they have accepted this positively. What the scientists are doing, we need to appreciate them. They have tried a lot for us. They, they want us to, inc to increase in everything, in knowledge, in uh, output, even in uh, uh, cash, uh, in our post. So through that, it is when they give us the training that we have seen that, okay, we are nowhere, we need to, we need to move with time to improve on our previous uh, experience. She has gained a lot of uh, experience and based on that, she will have more customers than the previous ones she has got. The Nigeria Central Bank and other financial institutions have become interested in the production of tomatoes after participating in workshops and policy development initiatives by the project. I've been in the farming system for the past 35 years ago. My major crop is tomato. All the training and seminars given to us is given to the old farmers. Even our, even our members that do not read and write, they've seen the benefits, they've seen the differences that this uh, new innovation brought by these uh, scientists, this, they benefit a lot. In Burkina Faso as well, the success story has been great. Dr. Valentine Triori, an alumnus of Waki, is breeding improved rice varieties for farmers. Through the, through the AU project, we quickly moved from small size demonstration field to we scale up to the farmer's field, like one hectare or hectare and a half. They, there, they were able to assess in terms of number of bags, and that was clear that they were harvesting better with the new varieties. We were able to release four new varieties in 2019. We call them Kamwensen rice. So they are pairs. Kamwensen rice 2, Kamwensen rice 4, Kamwensen rice 6, and Kamwensen rice 8. Already, farmers have seen the benefits of the system's rice intensification technology, which requires less seeds but has huge yield advantages. For instance, with eight to 10 kilograms of seeds, farmers are able to transplant one hectare of rice instead of using 15 to 20 kilograms of seeds. In addition, significant increase in tillering potential of rice with SRI led to a productivity increase of more than 75%. The Burkina Bay farmers have testimonies. And to us, a grata in era on a gaile bomb variety is so impressed by the new variety because uh, they saw that this was like a God gift, and they are blessed because they, they got opportunity to benefit from this project. And when they, they got the varieties. At the beginning, they were not uh, very sure of how the technology can work, mm -hmm. particularly when we, we asked them to do transplantation, single plant transplantation. And also, most difficult for them, it was the spacing. They saw that the spacing will be very, it's too much, and they think it, they, they are going to lose in the, this experience. But finally, they saw that they got particularly high tillering ability in the variety. Oui, justement, c'est ce que these new technologies, new varieties combined with good agricultural practices that they've learned from us is going to change farmers' life. Because in terms of income, 
when they see the productivity, when they, they assess the yield, it's clearly different. Madame Quidaugo Francois and Bakao Kidonie are graduate students working with Dr. Triori on the project. They say they are learning a lot. I'm still learning how to do the selection of the variety of the grain and from the base to base and from the base to base and certified. To know the literary techniques of the grain, I'm going to know the cycle of the grain, the cycle of the grain, and the cycle of the grain, 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 the cycle of the grain. Rice miller Kere Zure Lamuna has also been praising the project. From that Nimbu the farm, they did it home. She won't help Burkina people to eat Burkina rice, the rice which is produced in our plain. She wants them to eat our rice because when they are buying rice, they also can make money. The project is making great impact in Ghana as well. Dr. Maxwell Asante, who was 2020 National Best Scientist and Iwaki alumnus, is breeding climate smart rice varieties, including the Enapa variety for farmers. He has also set up rice demonstration plots as part of a farmer field school's activities under the AU EU project. This project, led by Iwaki, and CSIR, CRI, with support from EU and AU. A major component of the project was value chain development. So we, we had a lot of stakeholder interactions and it, it brought all the value chain actors together. So this project has really helped us to strengthen the, the, the value chain. And one of Ed, Edgar's varieties did excellently well in, in our multi-locational trial. In, in the same way, one of our, our varieties is doing excellently well in, in, in Burkina. So, a human on a yen, they are who need the soap, they are much a yen, a pet, they are who need the soap. They say, not first, and they are top at it, and then they are saying, good and strong, they are tuned to me like, like, oh, yeah, yeah, and our boy, Utima level was as soon as Utima, it become pa. Oh, no, they are boy. Number one, a patient cry when Otima want to miss sight to saw one more. Number two, she saw a very unproved. Number three, she saw one one time she wrote a and to saw move for the day and the panel dia. Me yeh me say about boy eh che me say the eh dia ni na. Some of the climate smart varieties of rice have been accepted for production under the National Planting for Food and Jobs program. Apart from the work on rice, farmer field school modules have also been implemented across the country for farmers to learn good agricultural practices in maize production. Policy briefs have been drafted to influence government policy. Under the AU EU project, we are doing research in developing uh, varieties um, that are resistant to the maize virus disease. So maize virus disease is transmitted by leaf uppers. Uh, these leaf uppers transmit the virus to the maize plants and causes uh, yield reduction. So if your variety is not resistant, uh, you have poor yields on your farm. The best way to control against uh, maize virus disease is the use of improved uh, maize varieties that are resistant to the, to the virus. Um, that is a sustainable approach. In terms of uh, uh, the African continent, uh, you go, most of Sub-Saharan Africa actually, maize is the number one crop. Uh, you mentioned the country Zambia, uh, countries like Zambia, Zimbabwe, uh, Malawi, uh, Mozambique, Kenya, Uganda. Maize is the staple food and in some of these countries when like we at times have droughts and so on and the maize production is affected, that country will say this year we have got 
uh, famine, we don't have food security because the maize was affected. So maize is a critically important crop, uh, not only in Ghana, it is the rest of West Africa and the rest of the continent actually. We worked on mutation induction for, to create resistance to four army when in some maize lines. It was such an interesting project. We did the work and were fortunate we had some few lines that were putatively resistant to the four army when. New projects in cowpea breeding for value chain demand led trades have been initiated. Also, outcomes of cowpea value chain workshops have led to the initiation of projects in development of new products made for cowpea, including shito. Dr. John Eleblu says the research outputs and innovations emerging from the project are exciting. We have a lot of innovations that we want to push to the markets. We want to push into the hands of farmers to fight especially climate change, which is the new phenomenon. The rains have been delayed in the south. You see, the rains have delayed and the rains that are raining now are heavy, very heavy, are causing floods on the fields. You have the scenario where you have very dry conditions and very, very wet under flooding conditions. And you can only survive in such environments using innovation, which is from science. The project is helping the three countries meet Sustainable Development Goal 1 on eradicating poverty as farmer income increases. It's also contributing to efforts to meet SDG 2 on zero hunger, SDG 9 on access to innovation, as well as SDG 12 on responsible production. Africa will not use a model different from other nations that have developed to develop. Africa would have to use the same model to develop. When you look around Brazil, China, even the United States of America, England, Japan, all of them developed from agriculture. It is the development of our agriculture which will, if you like, transform our economy. Nothing less was expected of Waki when the project began. Since its birth, the institution has graduated over 100 PhD alumni who have released about 160 varieties of staple crops across Africa. Waki has become a hub for helping ensure a food secure Africa and the EU-AU project fits directly into Waki's vision. It was a huge success in the fact that one of the goals of the EU-AU project is to invest in people through education. I was privileged to have my MP research work funded by the project and I was also engaged on the project. So having done this, I am well empowered with knowledge for the future. This project has helped me a lot because I've been able to achieve my research component of my program. So I, for instance, that's what I've benefited. And then I've also gained enormous knowledge in what I've learned in class and from the field. Francis Texan, who is ICT team lead at Waki, says the institution is introducing state-of-the-art ICT tools to help faculty and students undertake high-end research that benefits farmers. Student research is also time-bound. So if the student uh, is working on a project that is like three months and um, you have a facility that is going to slow you down, I don't think you get your results within that three months. Yeah. So with these high-end machines you, you see here, the students use shorter time um, when they are, they are on it, using it for their research. Yeah. 
using it for maybe computation or analytical uh, processes, they are able to do that within a very short um, time. Dr. Ajiman Dankwa, who is coordinator of academic programs, says the project is creating a good atmosphere for academia industry pharma collaborations. We've had more than 19 uh, value chain workshops and like I said we brought together uh, all the um, actors in the, in the value chain uh, to discuss uh, the challenges that we face uh, as actors to find solutions to them. Finance officer at Waki, Kwejo Ousu Efifa, says efforts are underway to raise funds to sustain these projects after funding runs out. He believes it is time governments increase their support for Waki. This is just the first phase of the problem that has been scratched. We need to go beyond what we started and bring more solutions. And so be beyond thanking the European Union for supporting this project, there are several other donors out there who are looking for trustworthy partners to commit their funds into. And we can show with evidence from the West Africa Centre for Crop Improvement that every amount of money that has come into the centre can be supported to the last coin. And so if there's any donor out there that has trust issues in Africa and trust issues in the research institutions, we put Waki as a test case. Rodomiro Ortiz, who is professor of agencies at the Swedish University of Agricultural Sciences, works with Waki on various projects. He says support for Waki is a high-yielding investment that helps farmers greatly. Well, we, we have this uh, project uh, with, uh, with funding through the African Union from the European Union, in which I was invited to be a partner. So we have uh, the participation there. Basically, our role, because we strongly encourage that this should be implemented by our African partner, was to provide that technical backstopping when necessary. No? So that's something that we have done. We have tried also other funding uh, calls. No, unfortunately, we have not been able yet to to get an, a new a new grant, but we are trying. So that's uh, part of. Uh, and not only focusing on research, but also on education through program exchange visits. No? So that's something that we have been trying to get funding through different uh, funding windows. There will be more food uh, for the African people because that was the project all about, to increase the output of the production. The prospects of the EU-AU project at Waki remains high. So far, High-yielding maize hybrids and new tomato hybrids have been released. They can be commercialized for more farmers to get access and increase their incomes. The project can support at least 10 to 15 seed growing companies as well as 5 to 10 processing companies to become more productive. The future is very bright. If you look at 2007, we started from a dilapidated building next door, which we modeled into a small facility for enrolling about 10 cohorts of students. We could make history next door. Today, we have come into this edifice, which is world class. We have labs. We are transforming our fields into world class fields. We have smart classrooms, we have conference rooms, boardrooms. Um, our scientists are on top of what they are doing. So we have been able to put in place facilities that allow scientists to sit down and work and make history. Waki is where the transformation of African agriculture is happening. Waki is where Africa's greatest plant breeding minds converge. Waki is where the most exciting technologies for Africa's green revolution are springing up. Many thanks to all our partners and we say keep the support coming. We won't disappoint you.